We're here to talk about some trust-based PPC. Now, even though I'm going to be using examples all about PPC, a lot of the trust-based marketing tactics that I'm going to talk about, you can use no matter what type of marketing channel that you're in, so you should be able to get a lot out of this. Um, went over a little bit about me, but you already know I'm from Granular in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. One thing I do want to say is that as such a small agency, we're proud to be shortlisted as one of the best small PBC agencies in the country. So we're going to be out at PubCon at the U.S. Search Awards. So if you're going to be out there, feel free to say hi to a couple of the Granular guys. Uh, personal achievement for me this year, PPC Hero listed me as a top five rising star in paid search. I hold that near and dear. And besides Granular, I blog for them a ton. There's just a few of the blogs that you can see me write for. So I'm going to start this discussion on PPC by talking about Domino's Pizza. Yeah. Especially Domino's Pizza in 2009. Why? Because they sucked. They were horrible. The food was awful. It was being com compared to worse than frozen pizza. More importantly, a gross employee video went viral. People were doing disgusting things to the food, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can look for it on your own time. But then they're sending that food out to customers, and that video on YouTube went viral, millions of views within a couple days, and that combined with the food being horrible led to their stock at an all-time low. We know Domino's is still around, so what did they do? Even though their stocks were so low, they dropped $75 million on a trust campaign. $75 million. It wasn't like your typical BP, oh, we're sorry. No, no, they, they were focused on building user trust and that was it, TV, print, radio, digital, all these scenes right here from their like seven, 10 minute YouTube ad. Just to say more than just, we're gonna change the product, which they did when they want to reposition themselves. It was more to say that we're sorry. It was more like we failed you. We failed our customers, but we hear you. We're going to make it better. Everything from the cooks had to read how awful they were doing. The marketing manager had to read how horrible of a job she was doing just to say we're going to make things better. So then what happened? Their stocks went up. It's more than just a product. They had to get people to want to come back into the stores and buy food. So then what does this have to do with PPC and Domino's and everything? Because trust is very important. Every single year in December, Gallup runs a poll of the least ethical professions in the United States. And every single year going back, and I guarantee the results are going to be the same this year, advertisers, sales car people, and telemarketers are all at the bottom of the list every single year. We're PPC. We're ad men. We're putting ads in front of people, and already we're at a disadvantage because people don't trust us. They don't like us. Now, if you're thinking, oh, car sales people, telemarketers, no, that's me. Those are those pushy guys. You know, that, that, no, that doesn't exist in our industry. Eh. Well, kind of does. I'm going back the wrong way. They do exist in our industry. Because how many times do we still see ads that say, buy, 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 now, 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 today, today, today? That's the pushy car salesman. Not thinking about the user experience and what they want to see, not really focusing on good marketing. So here's an example of a user experience. Ads for diamond engagement rings. Of course, that was a search term. Now, if I walk into an actual jewelry store, I'm about to you know, look for diamond engagement rings. I know how that pressure feels. And the first person behind the counter walks up to me and said, hey, we have instant financing by today. I'm probably walking out middle fingers up in the air and I'm going to Jared. So, <laughs> I did not take it to Jared, so shame on me. <laughs> but think about it. I'm about to drop potentially a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars on a diamond engagement ring. I don't get engaged often. I only did it the one time, so I'm not really familiar with jewelry stores. They're not really familiar with your brand in this type of industry. So why would they want to instantly drop that much money? There's no nurturing. There's no trust building. No reason why I should buy from you. How about this user experience? Yes. Keyword stuffing exists in PPC too. Clear evidence. The best in fence install. You're also the worst in English. It does not, doesn't read good. It's a horrible ad. Fence, 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 fence. Yeah, we get it. You deal with fencing. And when we're so focused on keywords, we start seeing ad results like this. Everything is the same. Nothing stands out. No winner. Do you actually think people are reading every single component, all those four of those ads? Nope. Doubt it. Our intention spans in this digital world, mobile world, are so short. No one's reading this. They're probably just going to click, OK, that one's on top. 
done. Sorry, position four. Meh. But that's how it is. If we kind of step back away from the keywords a little bit, what do you know? We can look for an ad for a non-branded term. When I typed in cleaning service, probably a little angry because it's all caps. We don't see any keywords at all. We're focusing on value messages. Why? If I need someone to clean my house, I know what a cleaning service does. Why should I choose this brand? New customers can save 100 bucks. Why should I choose this brand? Free in-home estimate. Why? If I call today, I'm going to save another 60 bucks. Why? Locally owned, right? I'm helping local businesses. Why? Professionals. You can even go a step further and say, Molly Maid is an international cleaning service company, but they're localizing the ad to my location with the location extension. Why? It's near me. It's convenient for me. That's why. Now, if everyone's so focused on, oh my God, oh my God, no, no keywords. What are you gonna do without keywords? Google's gonna be mad at me. Don't worry about that. For Houston, yes, when I create ads, I try to make sure it's in Google's best practice all the time, no doubt. But one important thing that I always keep in my head, Google doesn't convert on my ads in my website, people do. Let's switch that up a little bit. Google takes my money, users give me money. So when I write an ad, try to create my value messages, my proof points, the content on my landing pages, I'm focusing on the people every single time. And who says you can't have your cake and eat it too? You know, Josh talked about the new extended text ad formats yesterday and I'm loving them. You know, it's kind of out right now that people are struggling so Google had to extend the expiration date for the standard text ads, but you can still put in your keywords, have that awesome value message. But if you're thinking, whoa, 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 but if you're still saying to put the keywords in the front, aren't you still going to get those same boring results that you talked about before? But think a little bit about the remarketing. Can you do something like percent off and then your keyword? If you know you have the best prices, can you put price point and then the keyword? Something else that the competition isn't doing to make your ad stand out. And I want that character description to be nothing but a value message of why me? Because this might be the first impression a user ever gets with your brand. And my goal is to tee up that lifetime customer and start building that trust immediately. Once we get to that user commitment, I also look at these next nine points that we're going to talk about and see how I can use them in not only my ads, but also on my landing pages. So if you want to take a picture of this and look at these points and see how can you implement them in the rest of the things that I'm going to talk about. Customers want to know if to build that commitment, are you authentic? Are you for real? Are you telling me the truth? Is it all just fluff, you know, content that you obviously just got from the manufacturer or whatever, just stuffing it on your website? Are you knowledgeable? Are you credible? Are you appropriate for me? Now, by appropriate, it means not anything risque, controversial. Appropriate means, can you satisfy my needs? If I need to buy wholesale, do you clearly say that on your website that you offer wholesale, or do you just sell one or two pieces and you're not for me? It's okay if you lay that out. Just let the user know right off the bat. Do you offer customized solutions? Can I get exactly what I want? Are you safe? More safe meaning, is there a long-term commitment, but I'm more leery about that? Sometimes safety could mean you have to deal with legal government terms. That could have a few different meanings right there. Do I understand what I'm gonna get? You know, if I click submit, what's the next step? What am I gonna get in the mail? That type of thing. Are, the, are you the authority in your industry? And then, of course, it comes down to price. Am I getting what I want? So we already kind of talked about the ad message for a little bit, but I want to start implementing these into the ad extensions. So you already know ad extensions are important. Back in October 2013, Google announced ad extensions have a direct positive effect on your ad rank. That is the truth, but they can do more than just help you get higher ad ranks. Remember, I'm trying to get these users for the lifetime. I want to get them to convert if they do read my extensions. So this is for sheet music. You know, if anyone's a piano player instrument, they know what sheet music is, what they use to play the songs that they want to learn. But why should I pick this company? Over a million titles, superiority. Why should I pick this company? 25% off new releases, value. Why should I pick this company? No hassle returns, safety. Why should I pick this company? If I buy two or more copies, I'm saving 8%, value. All why messages, all building trust to get that user commitment. Here's my new favorite extension, the price extensions. This is the newest one that is actually live and not in beta anymore. It's only available on mobile, so I like it for two reasons. One, it takes up so much real estate. <laughs> that ad is gonna be me, and that's what the beauty of why I love PPC, because that could be all one ad. 
But more importantly, we also get the what and the why. So we can see the site link extensions that can send people deeper to their site for the actual product that they might need. But if you know you're competitive on your pricing, you can add that to the ad as well. And there's a few different qualifiers. You can just have main price point up to starting from. You can change that up to whatever. This is more than just e-commerce. I'm using this for B2B clients too. So since it is only on mobile, I checked my largest client yesterday and their largest non-branded campaign. The average mobile click-through rate for that campaign I have right now is 13%. It's okay. I definitely have some work to do. When that price extension is added to the ad, my mobile click-through rate is 44%. That's an over about 235% jump. Huge difference because it stands out and it gives the user exactly what they need. So those two extensions I just went over are the easy ones. But we also have some extensions that take a little bit of work. You're going to have to put a little bit more time and money to probably see the better results. So the first one I want to go through is seller ratings. Now, we've probably seen these before. Uh, Bright, or, uh, is it Best Local did a study on how many users or consumers look at reviews before buying something back in 2015. What Bright Local found is that over 92% of people try to look for reviews before buying something. They need to hear from other people if this company or brand is good for me. So already now we can include that in our ads. If you click the word rating in the extension, Google will take you to a separate tab where you can actually see all the actual customer reviews that are collected. And WordStream, Larry Kim's company who was here yesterday, did a study earlier this year and they found out the ads with seller ratings got 17% higher click-through rate than the same ads that didn't have them. 17% jump. And you can start collecting reviews from all these different companies. I have the full list right there on the bottom. Uh, don't worry, I'll be sharing the slides so you can look for them later too. Uh, the ones I'm most familiar with are Trustpilot and Yahoo. And the reason it takes a little bit of extra effort is that these are paid services. So you do need to go a little above and beyond and start collecting these reviews to start showing up in your ads. Once you do get it set up and integrated with your website and everything, you need to design email templates and start following up with the users after they purchase something. Otherwise, how else are you going to collect those users? Another one, this is an also a personal favorite one of mine too, is consumer ratings. Now, to start getting these consumer ratings, you need to sign up for Google Consumer Surveys. And what's going what's to do, and Geico's not a client of mine, but I just want to use this one as a hypothetical example. Let's say, so let's say Geico was starting a new consumer survey. The survey is going to start off with a qualifying question of, have you bought car insurance from any of these brands within the past year? So if a person selects Geico, then they'll go on to the rest of the survey and start answering questions that are important to this industry. Um, if they don't select Geico, then they're scrapped and Google will just keep finding another one until the quota's filled. So the importance of that is, even if you don't do paid search, look at Google Consumer Surveys, please, because you can get a ton of valuable information about your target audience. That survey can find out what exactly they need, what other pain points are, you can break it down by demographic, age, gender, and really find out who your core audience is and what they truly value. So not only can you take that back and change your ad message, your page content, and everything, you can also get this extension here. So Google's going to pick out uh, what actually shows up based on what industry you're in. So the ratings, ease of purchase, service. This isn't what they call an automated ad extension where the advertiser doesn't have any control over it. Google's going to put up there. And if your ratings are too low, Google won't show it at all. You have to have a, a certain level to reach that. But if you can't get on there, you can potentially see up to another 10% click the rate boost. Review extensions, the final ad extension I'm going to talk about, are not easy to get. They're pretty difficult. When Kirk Williams back there gets them, he creates memes like he does. When I do them, I do the Carlton dance because it's tough. So if you, haven't seen a if you haven't seen a review extension yet, it's this quote that can show up within your ad from a third party source. And if you click the source after the quote, Google will open up another tab so you can actually read the full article where this is from. It has to be an online article and it, it, these extensions do expire. It'll only be active a year from the published date of whichever one you submitted. They're pretty tough to get because if the review is too salesy, it looks like it's one of those sponsored content things where you obviously just paid the author to write how awesome you are, those will get rejected. I've had review extensions from Forbes get rejected, and then I get extensions from a blog that are good. So there's no real clear-cut answer of how to do it. But you can see review extensions boost up your click-through rate up to 10%. If you're e-commerce, become a Google trusted store. Not only do you get that great little check mark in your shopping ads to let them know that you are a trusted store, 
but you can automatically set up seller ratings and review extensions. My favorite part is the review extensions because we already know that they expire if you do them manually. But if you're a Google trusted store, you get five different options from Google that never expire. We already know we've seen that 10% click-through rate boost. So with all the extensions that we're talking about, if you still focus on the relevancy and the keyword factor, we already talked about how price extensions, I just had one small sample you know, of how it really boosted my mobile click-through rates. We had the call-out extensions, 17% boost. We had the, uh, the, the ratings, consumer ratings extension, that's another 10%. Review extensions, 10%. What's the biggest part about quality score? It's click-through rate. So as we build our click-through rate through other channels, through other trust focuses by tools that Google offers, you can back away from the keyword stuffing ad messages and really focusing on a good user experience that's going to build the trust for that they want to click through to the next point, which is our landing pages. Because my ads are done. I got the user to the site. I set them up. Your landing pages need to knock them down. And when I see landing pages like this for B2B, I cringe. I hate this so much for a B2B client. One, if you, I don't know if you can really see it words, but the, the word CNC machine is in there a ton of times. And I worked with B2B industrial clients a lot in my past. So if someone as that technical engineering is looking for CNC machining services, they already know what it is. So I understand that you might need content for SEO purposes, but kind of going back to what Damon was saying, I'm a huge Unbounce fan too, is to creating dedicated landing pages that focus on the marketing experience. Again, I search for CNC machining services. There's your relevancy right there. Get that title out of the way. It says CNC in there a few times, but this is the only content that's on this PPC landing page. The rest is all white space. But why should I choose this company? Parts build exactly how I want them. Why should I choose this company? Instant pricing. Why should I choose this company? Transparent lead times. Why? Live engineering support. Why? Upload my cat so it's custom to my needs. Why? Save 20%. There's the value right there. Six value messages in that little piece of content. It's not explaining what CNC machining is. They know what it is. Why? Little content, clear, bright call to action, take my money. And what's important too is that when we're creating ads is that we don't want to be liars. I already talked about setting up that experience already within our ads. We want to make sure everything we promise is in our landing pages as well. Uh, the, probably the thing I buy the most online are vinyl records. I'm a record guy. So if I, and I like to look at different shops, sometimes they have different offerings and good deals and rare records. But if I go to a store that said free shipping on the ad, but the website doesn't say anything free shipping, I'm like, whatever, I go to Amazon. I know they got it all the time. It happens. So again, exterminators. Find, have a pest problem, bug problem, I know what an exterminator is. Don't tell me that with a keyword stuff title and content. Guaranteed solution, it's up there above the phone number and in the main headline, 24 hours. Save 50 bucks on exterminator, right there in the middle. Lifetime warranty, doesn't say it exactly, but it's 100% satisfaction guarantee right down there. Special offer, yep, there it is, another 100 bucks off. This landing page is just pure value message. Hear why messages, know what, and they even layer on additional proof points. Testimonial right there from an actual customer. And then they're building on that credibility and the authority by putting in their Better Business Bureau right in there. And that's how you can also layer on additional proof points. Some of the things that we, I talked about earlier, the Trust Pilot, the Yapos, the tools that help you collect those reviews, they all come with widgets that you could put on your website and custom design, if you have a designer developer, they can match the look and feel of your website. So those widgets will pull in the ratings and they'll live on your landing pages. So the user doesn't have to leave your site to go to a third party source. They see immediately social proof of why everyone else loves you and your brand. So you can look into that one. Here's one example of, for uh, anyone who likes wine. This is from Amazing Clubs, Wine of the Month Club. This is one of the coolest proof points I've seen in a long time they compare themselves directly to their competitors. Peer proof of why we're the best and there is no other option. Only we can offer seven days a week customer service. Only we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. They toss the other ones a bone to make it more believable so it's not 100% all on us. Only we're rated number one by top 10 reviews. Only we have the best prices. Don't believe us, we'll list it all right here. So think of that user experience. You know, if the ad was telling a good point, they got the user there. The content is great. They have that proof point as well as 100% satisfaction guarantee. Another call out that you can check out that they're number one. What's the user going to want to do? They're going to want to convert. 
because there is no other option. And they're all surrounding the call to action for a reason because that's the only step that they have to do left. So that's it, we converted the user, we're done, right? Nope. This is my favorite part about PPC because this is like to say now I'm just getting started. I want to use paid search and all these trust-based elements that we're talking about to bring that user to come back again and again and again and again. I don't care if they come back organic, direct, email, social, I don't care. If they initially became from paid search, I like to tell my clients, PPC just doesn't help PPC. Your other channels don't just help each other out. It's not a siloed thing. My goal with PPC is to help your overall brand and your overall marketing because they do all work together. We can see right here that it's six to seven times more expensive to gain a new customer. And that's more important for me when I'm paying for ads. Kind of go, Larry Kim mentioned this a little bit yesterday too, and I have it in mind, is that not only are uh, returning users cheaper, but they're two to three times more likely to convert. So I'm okay with using my good experience and building the trust that the user comes back because I want that user to feel good. I want them to come back. So if they stop searching for my unbranded terms and then they start searching for my brand name because that experience delivered, I'm totally fine with that. It's still helping the company. You're still making money. There's some important things to know when I'm talking about lifetime value. Return on ad spend is gonna be good when you're looking at just kind of direct results. But I wanna look at return on ad spend over the course of the lifetime of that user. And lifetime value, there, there should be a whole another session just on lifetime value. You can talk about that for hours because it is difficult to find out. But the more we work on trying to find that lifetime value, you're gonna get the true ROI, not just what you see in Google Analytics. So if you wanna get lifetime value, keep four things in mind. You still need that quality product. Think going back to Domino's in the beginning, right? They, they still had you know, a lot of money. They were still spending on ads in 2009. The food still sucked. So it doesn't matter if the product's bad, people are still gonna come, or they're still not gonna come. It doesn't matter how much you advertise in it. You know, fool me one, shame on me, right? Number two, you need good customer service, and this goes both ways. If a user has a good customer experience, do you ever reach out to them and say, thank you, we appreciate your service. I, you know, what else can we do for you? Make them feel part of your brand and family. Or from the flip side, if the user's not having a good experience, what are you doing to change that? We know a lot of people like to complain on social media, Yelp, all these review sites. Are you going back and trying to mend that and make it better to bring that user back? Because people make mistakes. A lot of people understand that too. So if you can build that user experience and make them feel valuable, they could come back to your brand. Ongoing outreach and engagement. If you want people to come back to your site, you need to be in them. You know, we are a multi-device world our attention spans are really low, like I said earlier. So are you using your social media, your email marketing, organic? If you're talking strictly just from the paid search side, are you ever thinking about remarketing next steps? So if you know, I buy a guitar on this website, maybe I wanna remarket to them with, oh, now you need a strap, now you need a case. You know, to try to keep in front of them with a good experience and what they actually would need. Because all those users, if you keep coming, they will funnel back. And again, I don't care what channel they come back. Initially, if it was paid, great. And then last, you need the ability to track the exact customers with your CRM. Because if you can't figure out lifetime value and how much a single user is worth to you, then you, it's really hard to prove that value. So if, hypothetically, I had worked for, let's say I worked for a shoe company, can't use actually real client data with this one, and I paid, it was a $10 CPA for a cost of a $30 pair of shoes. That's not good. And that, once you really factor in actually the cost of the product, the amount I spent on ads, the amount I spent on all these trust elements and everything, it's like, oh, that, that's pretty bad. But then what if your CRM data really showed that well, that user that you did had a great experience, now they come back and they buy three, four pairs of shoes every single year for the next six, seven years. How does that CPA number look now? It's completely different. So once we get that true data of how much a PPC conversion is worth, well, I'm going back, sorry about that, then we could really see, okay, I'm comfortable boosting my budgets in this campaign. I'm, I'm comfortable raising my bids on this keyword. 
So your cost per acquisition numbers will be totally different from what you see initially in AdWords and Google Analytics that compared to what you might see in your CRM for a lifetime customer. And that's how you can grow and build your brands. And if you provide that good experience, you will have users coming back again and building that huge following. Uh, that's all I have for you. Thank you very much. It's, it's sensitive, isn't it? Oh, it's more sensitive now. Thank you, Joe, very much. If You're you guys welcome. have uh, any questions for Joe, raise your hand real high. We've got a couple of microphones uh, wandering around in the audience. They're crazy. They're, they've got arms and legs. It's wild. They're wandering around the audience. So if anyone has a question, you weren't able to get it uh, tweeted because you were so enthralled, uh, raise your hand high enough for, for one of them to see you. And uh, we'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Joe, uh, a question that I have for you is uh, sort of a running theme through this was fewer keywords. So can you give me an idea of what kind of actual returns you see mm -hmm. uh, when you use fewer keywords? When we're testing out new keywords or no keywords, um, again, it, it's testing. You know, what messages work with the user? And sometimes we found out that depending on your industry and how big your brand is, then you feel more comfortable testing out no keywords. Like we saw in the Molly Made one, they're an international company. So they feel more comfortable for non-branded terms, uh, to, or for, yeah, for non-branded terms to not include any of the keywords. Because it's an industry where the people know what they do. Um, I've had certain industries that are extremely niche. Um, you know, they, they don't have a lot of that brand awareness, and we do have to concentrate a little bit on putting more of those keywords in there. Um, a lot of them, like the biggest client I talked about that's using the price, ad, uh, price extension, um, we've tested it out for their subscription service as well. And from what we've seen is that not going after the keywords and focusing on the user experience, when we A-B tested those ads, we saw anywhere between a 30 to a 45% lift on that click-through rate. And this is just the core message that we're looking at. Not, I'm not looking at the ad that's including with the ad extensions as well, because those are going to help boost your click-through rate. But just looking at the core ad message, we saw a 35 to, uh, I'm sorry, 30 to 45% boost. All right, all right. Did any, uh, any brave souls, microphones find any brave souls out there? All right, well, if you have any questions. Oh, we do have one back here in the back. Sorry, it's Dim. Hello. Hello. I'll be brave. Uh, how about business to business? In terms of just overall, do you do any other current marketing channels at all? Or, you know, like you really focus on, like, do you, is email big for you? Do you still do like print or white paper blast? Yes. Do you ever test what type of content people engage with the best, especially on social media when you can track that? We're starting to deal with Okay, yeah, and I would, I would start looking at that as well. And if you have, you know, white papers or any sort of actual direct mail that's being sent out, create like a short link or something, and then add URL parameters to that short link so you can track specific, you know, direct mail campaigns within Google Analytics. So what I do, because I've worked with a lot of B2B industrial clients in the past that, you know, they, we don't have a lot of data on them. So we kind of use overall social and this direct mail tracking piece that we can see, okay, what pieces of mail really interact or are engaging with people? What are bringing in the most visitors? And from there, we'll look at specific search terms of what the topic of that white paper direct mail was about. And then from there, we can expand upon, okay, this is what our core audience really engages with. Uh, something I would clearly recommend for you is that Google Consumer Surveys, because it's only gonna target people who are either really interested in your industry or visited your website before or have converted on your website before. And then that's gonna be a great way for you to find out how to get you know, the right message in front of the right users who are coming to your website. And the cost per clicks on these consumer surveys are insanely cheap. We're like 10 cents a survey type thing. So that's a really good investment I'd say for you to go in. Yeah, you bet. All right, any others out? No? All right, well you're from Milwaukee so I have one more question for you. Yes, I like beer and cheese. <laughs> You're close. My question was going to be, what's wrong with Aaron Rodgers, man? What's the deal? I'm kidding. I don't want to talk Guys, about Joe Martinez. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you later.